Welcome back guys, my name's Gareth, this is Tech Check. We're back from the barbers, we've had a fresh trim, and I thought there's no better time to do a new video. So this week's video is gonna be covering off this MSI B550 Pro VDH Wi-Fi. Bit of a mouthful, but the reason why we're gonna be covering this one off is we are gonna be utilizing it in a new build in the next couple of weeks. And essentially, I wanted to find out and give you guys the insights in 2023, is it still worth using a B550 with Z690, X670, all the new platforms coming out, is it actually worth it? So gonna give you an overview of the motherboard, what it's actually capable of, and then tell you, is it actually worth it? Let's do this. So for all you old school AMDers out there, potentially with a Ryzen 1000, 3000 chips, or even 2000 chips, you may have come across the B450 Max. And essentially this motherboard here is a direct replacement for that particular motherboard. It offers all of what the B450 Tomahawk Max has to offer and then gives you a few added extras as well, such as PCIe Gen 4 and a few other things which we'll touch on later in the video. Why are we choosing this particular motherboard? I've already mentioned we're gonna be utilizing it in a build that's up and coming. I had a very set structure in terms of what a motherboard had to offer for this particular build. It had to have Wi-Fi, it had to have Bluetooth, it had to have Gen 4 PCIe, and it needed to come in at a particular cost. And this particular motherboard covered all the boxes. So let's get it out, let's have a closer look at what you get. It's third gen Ryzen ready, so for anyone that's got 3000 or 5000 CPUs, plump them in, you'll be ready to go, no problems whatsoever. The thing to note here, it will not be compatible with either 3400 or the 3200G, so if you've got integrated graphics guys, this motherboard's not going to be for you. On the back is what you come to expect. It's got, like I said, the waffle with regards to the core boost, lightning gen four ready, airflow optimized, and it's even got an M.2 shield as well. So opening up the box guys, we are greeted with the actual motherboard itself. We'll take that out and just put it to one side. We have our antennas for our Wi-Fi. We've also got two included SATA data cables. We've got our, well, it looks to be three M.2 screws. So if you're installing an NVMe or an M.2 drive, you want to make sure that you keep these nice and safe. We've got our all important IO shield. Obviously this motherboard doesn't come integrated. So when we're installing the motherboard into the case, we want to make sure our IO shield is firmly installed before. If not, you'll be undoing all eight and nine screws, taking it out and reinstalling this. So let's take a close look at the actual motherboard, starting in this top left-hand corner. And for you eagle eye viewers out there, you'll notice there is only one eight pin CPU power cable. Number one, it's a budget orientated motherboard. And number two, it's not specifically targeting overclocking CPUs. Moving across, we've got a four plus two power phase. One thing to note here is that we are missing uh, an actual heat shroud here. Now, with the benefits of B550 and how much the delivery has got better and better over time, I don't suppose there's gonna be any issues up here at all, but it would have been nice to see an additional heat sink just like here on the left-hand side. We've then got our CPU uh, header, so you can attach your all-in-ones or any towel coolers that goes on here. Just be wary though, guys, if you don't put it on this particular one, when you boot up your computer for the first time, it will come up with an error message saying that there's no CPU cooler attached. Moving across to our DIMM slots or our RAM slots, it's really, really nice to see four DIMM slots, guys. Most of the time, when you come across these M motherboards, you only get two. Now, because this motherboard's about two and a half, three years old now, there's been plenty of BIOS updates. It originally supported up to around 3,800 megatransfers per second. Now it's up to 4,400 megatransfers per second. So I mentioned we're gonna be using this in a build and we're actually gonna be using 16 gigs of 4,000 megatransfers per second C18 RAM. So Ryzen 5000 with this 5600X that we're gonna be putting here will really benefit from the larger transfer speeds but ideally you should be looking at something like 3600 at C16 
and that will give you a really, really good optimized build. Moving more to the right, we've then got our pump header as well. This can be doubled up as a case fan header as well. So something really important to note here, guys, if you've got a case that's got six fans in it, two or three at the front, two at the top, one at the rear as an exhaust, you need to ensure that you've got enough headers on your motherboard or that you've got a fan controller in the back of your case. Because on this particular motherboard, we've got our CPU header, which is one, pump header, which is two, system fan header three, system fan header four, and then we have system fan header number five. So we've only actually got five headers on this particular motherboard and one of them is for our tower cooler or all in one. So that would only leave you with four. So please make sure you pick up a couple of splitter cables, that way you're not gonna fall short. Moving down the board, we've got our easy one, it's our 24 pin connector. Very, very straightforward, every motherboard has one. Again, we've mentioned our system fan headers. We've then got what's really nice to see is our USB type C guys. A lot of the latest cases are coming as standard now with USB type C with their faster transfer speeds and things like that. It's nice to be able to connect our smartphones, tablets and other, I don't know, micro SD cards connected via USB type C at five gigabits or 10 gigabits per second. So it's really nice to see that that's included on this budget orientated board. Moving down the right hand side, we can then look at our SATA data connections or SATA ports. We've got four additional ports here. So for anyone that doesn't want to actually utilize Gen 3 or Gen 4 M.2s or NVMe drives, you can still utilize those ports there. One further down is our USB 3.0. So no problems with that. For you RGB lovers out there, we've got a J Rainbow one, which is a three pin header, which is a five volt addressable header. So they've got you covered there as well. We then move to our JFP one, which is essentially all our front IO, where it connects our power, our reset, our HDD lights and so on and so forth. Do check out your mother mode manual when you're connecting these up to avoid that disappointment when you press the power button and nothing works. Moving along the bottom, we've then got our USB type two, and then another one here, so plenty of connectivity there. And then we've got our system fan three. The next one across is also a four pin RGB connection. So you get two four pins guys, which is really, really good to see. And you also get two five volt addressable headers as well. There's one right at the top here and right down the bottom here. So plenty of connections for our RGB, which will please most people. Moving along to the bottom, we've got our J Audio 1, which is our audio connection, guys. So no problem there. It's always in the bottom left-hand corner. Moving up the board, guys, we can turn to our CMOS battery. That's in a pretty awful place, in all honesty. You would really, really want it somewhere which is accessible without having to remove your graphics card or potentially take out the motherboard. We've then got our Gen 4, because we're on B550, Gen 4 NVMe or M.2 slot at the top. B550 is not like X570, even though we have got another secondary M.2 slot down here. You can't put a Gen 4 drive in this slot because you won't get the use out of it. The top one is 4.0 and the bottom one is 3.0. So it still comes with two M.2 slots which is really, really good. Turning our attention to this particular slot here, this is our Gen 4 times 16 slot. The top slot on your motherboard should always be utilized for your graphics card. This one is really, really good. It's nice and reinforced as well. So it's gonna prevent a little bit of sagging on the graphics card, potentially stops any damaging when putting it in and taking it out as well. The one thing to note here, is the motherboard as standard doesn't come with any RGB illumination or anything like that. So that's one thing where they have really cut back, but they have given you the sufficient connections to be able to connect all your other hardware to get RGB all synced up through MSI lighting. Moving on to the back, we have got our DVI port, we've got a display port, we've got an HDMI port, which is at the back here. We've then got our USB 3.0 ports and our USB 2.0 ports. Now, the one reason why I do like this motherboard is for this particular little button here. That is our MSI flashback button. Now, essentially, a lot of the budget orientated builds do not have that button there, guys. And it's an absolute nightmare. 
let's say that this right uh, this particular motherboard was only uh, 3000 ready and it wasn't 5000 ready let's say that you didn't have the particular cpu yet and essentially you wanted to take your motherboard out you wanted to flash your bios and make sure that when you got your new upgrade you could just slop it in and everything would be absolutely fine well without this button here it's much much harder to do essentially with this button you can just download the latest bios make sure you've got your eps and your 24 pin you don't even need a cpu in the actual socket you can just slot in your flash drive press the bios flashback and it will perform the update for you and then when you get your new cpu you can just drop it in no problem at all we don't need to worry about having a previous uh, gen cpu in the socket we don't need to worry about doing anything at all it's very 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 straightforward and that's just down to this bios flashback button here so one bit of advice i would always say is if you are looking to actually look at upgrading to a motherboard please 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 ensure that number one your cpu is compatible with that particular motherboard because as we've already said this one's not compatible with the 3400 or the 3200 g so bear that in mind and saves a lot of time a lot of hassle and a lot of headaches if you do have that bios flashback function on the board itself so the last things to mention here guys are really really important it's actually got a one gig LAN connection, which is located here. Then the two other major things and the reasons why I actually bought this motherboard is because the customer wanted Wi-Fi and they also wanted Bluetooth. Generally because this is gonna be for his son and it's gonna be located on the top floor and he doesn't wanna be running cables through two different floors. He's got a really good Wi-Fi signal and essentially wanted a motherboard that had built-in Wi-Fi. So this particular motherboard does have Wi-Fi. It's got Gigabit LAN and it's got AMD Wireless AC Bluetooth 4.2 built in as well, which is really, really good. He's got a wireless headset that he uses for his PlayStation. So he's gonna be able to plug in his USB dongle and everything's gonna work absolutely fine. So overall guys, I don't think there's too much more to say. Um, it's gonna blend in really, really nicely. For anyone that's looking to upgrade from 2,000, 3,000 uh, to 5,000 CPUs, it's gonna be very, very good. From a cost perspective, it comes in at a really respectable cost. I actually paid 122 pounds for this uh, motherboard from AWD. And for a B550 motherboard that gives you PCIe Gen 4, gives you all your RGB connections, plenty of connectivity on the back, including Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB-C, and four DIMM slots, I don't think you can go wrong. So yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that I'm uh, liking it as much as I am. Fair enough, it is more budget orientated, but that's exactly what I bought this motherboard for. For you cost conscious people out there that don't want to sell a kidney or a PC a liver to actually get a motherboard that's got all this stuff that you're potentially not going to use, then this could be a very, very, very good option. So I'm hoping this will give you a little bit more insight to this particular motherboard. I didn't want to go into too much detail because there is some um, actual channels out there that go into every single connection, the ins and outs of everything. I think for me, I just wanted to give you an overview of what it's potentially gonna be good for, things to look out for, and essentially, I think it's really, really good value as well. So we're gonna potentially do more of these in the future, and if that's something that you're interested in, then leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you're thinking of upgrading to this VDH board from MSI, let me know a comment down in the comment section below. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to help out no problem at all. Guys, hope you've enjoyed. Have a great weekend. Take care.